Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Now that patch 2.4 is in full swing, I thought it was time to once again talk about the daddy of all daddies, Zhongli. He's actually the reason why I wanted to play Genshin and suffice to say, I've remained his simp ever since. Now I've been asked a lot in my comments if Zhongli is still worth summoning. If you want the short answer, here it is. Yes, he is still worth summoning. If that's all the convincing you need, then frankly you don't need to watch any further. But maybe you have some doubts about Zhongli's value, or maybe you've gotten this far without the Geo Archon and aren't sure if you really need him anymore. So in this video, I'll tell you why I think Zhongli is still worth pulling. Let's begin. 1. Zhongli highly increases survivability. Have you heard the saying that Zhongli havers don't know how to dodge? Well, I'm one of them. Shields are meant to better allow that playstyle anyway and there's no better shield than Zhongli's. It's extremely thick with high scaling, self-reinforcing capabilities and potential 100% uptime. These make Zhongli a great character to have especially if you are in early or mid game. Players who are still in the pre-artifact grind stage, who still have unbuilt characters or builds in progress, can often have a hard time surviving the open world and in farming domains, not just Spiral Abyss. Zhongli simply makes those experiences a lot more comfortable. His meteor drop also petrifies most enemies for a short moment and even with the long animation at least it gives your team a moment of invulnerability and a 2-3 second window to recover. So early to mid AR players, I highly recommend Zhongli for you. Though Genshin brought in shield ignoring enemy types as you progress, there's still a huge amount of content that can simply be made easier with a shield like Zhongli's. Shields will never be completely obsolete and it's not like we'll keep seeing only new enemy types that can bypass shields. Who knows, Mihoyo could just as well revitalize the shield meta in the future. And it's not like shields became impotent versus a rift hound. I still find myself using Zhongli on spiral abyss floors or world explorations against these shield bypassing enemies. And yes, there are a lot of meta-certified teams that don't have Zhongli as an essential party member. Take Morgana, National Team, and Sukukumon for example. None of these use Zhongli. Still, there are so many other teams and characters that Zhongli enables or improves. I've seen the argument on why Zhongli is considered a quote-unquote damage loss because his burst animation's too long, there's so many other ways you can improve your team damage, you can do better if you just learn how to dodge and do perfect iframes and all that. But it's hard to quantify just how much the player's experience can improve thanks to Zhongli. What could be an easily replaceable character for one player might be an indispensable quality of life improvement for for another. And if you found yourself short of a good shielder or maybe you're dying a little more often than you like, Zhongli can be the man for you. 2. Zhongli directly and indirectly increases DPS. Even if Zhongli's meant to protect, it's not like he's a massive damage loss to your team. For one, his extremely thick shield means your main DPS won't get interrupted. There are a lot of main DPSs out there who significantly lose out on damage if that happens. To dish out as much damage as possible, being resistant to interruption is crucial for them, and having a thick shield is one of the easiest ways to achieve that. For example, Yoimiya's attack strings won't get interrupted. Melt Ganyu can get into close range, and Ningguang's charged attacks will actually launch. More than that, his Jade Shield shreds all elemental and physical resistance of nearby enemies by 20%, which is significant enough. While this is good for elemental teams, it's a lot more useful for increasing geo damage, physical damage, and animal damage, since those are the types of damage that can't be shredded by Viridescent Venerer. Plus, of course, Zhongli is great with geo teams. Not only does he take geo resonance to the next level, but his geo pillar will make other geo character structures resonate and deal damage as well. Mastering positioning of Geo Constructs can be tricky, but if you main characters like Albedo or Geo Traveler, Zhongli is a great character to comp with them. Essentially, Zhongli is a dependable character for helping your carries actually deal damage and he can practically fit into most team comps thanks to his universal compatibility. 3. Zhongli can be a main carry So far, I've been talking about Zhongli's support capabilities. Personally, I think those are really the most important to consider because good supports have to be future-proof, flexible, and multifunctional. Zhongli ticks all those boxes. 
But aside from Zhang Li as a support, you can also consider Zhang Li as a main carry, meaning that he'll take up most of your team's field time. Because Zhang Li can already protect himself incredibly well and shred enemy resistance, giving him a Crescent Pike for free to place or some other offensive pole arm if you manage to get one, and using his fast attack animations makes him a decent physical damage DPS that can be buffed by a superconduct team or even Yun Jin now that she's out. His passive talent also allows him to convert his HP into additional damage on his auto attacks. So you'll likely want an attack percent build on him, at least having those HP substats helps with his damage somehow. But alongside that, he's also a great character for carrying your off-field damage dealers like Sheng Ling, Sing Chou, Fischl, Albedo, Beido, and so on. This way, even if Zhang Li's individual damage isn't as high as other main carries like Yula or Xiao, he can very well keep the team's damage consistent, effective, and free of interruption. Although the trade-off here is that you'll have to sacrifice a bit of his shield health as a main carry. In this case, you will want to be more conscious of dodging when you can, so that his shield can have as much uptime as possible. Still, it's completely viable. If you want to see those beautiful spear thrusting and kicking animations, it's nice to know he can be built with that playstyle in mind. For Zhongli works at any level of investment. Another great thing about our Geo Archon is that he isn't hard to farm for. He doesn't need incredible stats to perform his most basic function of protecting your team and shredding resistance. At the cheapest level, you can use a Black Tassel with him, which provides a good amount of HP substats for a shield bot build. Even some high AR players still use it. He also has a lot of artifact choices. Noblesse, Tenacity, Petra, Emblem, even Glad or Pale Flame for carries. I'll discuss this more in depth in my upcoming updated guide, but the point is that with Zhongli, you don't have to live in a domain for months just to get him a usable set. In fact, if you're just using him for his shield, you don't even need set bonuses. Just level him up for his base HP, increase his shield talent level, give him some HP% percent stats, and his shield is already very workable. Of course, with higher investment in terms of weapons, artifact sets, and stat min-maxing, your Zhongli will be able to do more, support-wise and damage-wise. But even if you're low AR or lacking in resources, Zhongli can still be a valuable addition to your team. In the same vein, Zhongli does not need constellations. At all. While his constellations can add a little quality of life, he feels already complete at C0, and getting his constellations is really just a simp's endeavor, like myself. All in all, Zhongli is one of the most solid, worth it, future-proof supports to have who is friendly to any type of player, whether beginner or endgame, free-to-play or whale. No matter what brand new enemy types MiHoYo will keep introducing, I believe Zhongli will never not be useful. Just be ready to listen to his old man monologues. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? So everyone, those are my main reasons for why Zhongli is still worth pulling even in 2.4. But what about you? If you're a Zhongli haver, how's your experience been with him so far? For others, are you still on the fence about pulling Zhongli? Has someone else caught your eye? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you soon. Take care!